Oh my gosh, it's like going back in a time machine. Welcome <laughs> back. It was the game show that made slime a thing and proved things can get real messy. Isn't watching video always like going back in a time machine? Okay, <laughs> oh, enough, cheese. All right, so Mark, we all remember Double Dare, obviously, but what people may not know about Double Dare and you is that you were filming the show, hosting the show, which is very messy, with undiagnosed OCD. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Can't. So tell us about OCD. How did it impact your daily life as a host on Double Dare and also before? Well, when we auditioned for the show, there was no mess, okay? It was just asking questions and we did some clean physical challenges. Then I get the job. I go to Philadelphia where we're shooting and the first day in the studio, there's a slide and a guy is pouring uh, chocolate on it and then they have this green stuff going on over here. I didn't know what it was. And I said, <laughs> excuse me, what, what, what is this? <laughs> And they said, well, it's the obstacle course. I said, well, I, what's the obstacle course? And they said, well, it, whoever wins the most money runs eight obstacles. And if they do it in 60 seconds or less, uh, they'll win prizes. And, and I said, do you really think kids want to do that? Oh, yes. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it became this thing, massive yeah. thing. At the time, uh, Facts of Life and Different Strokes were on VHF television, if you remember that is, yes. and, uh, and UHF TV, and they were winning. All of a sudden, their numbers dropped. Where were they going? They were watching Double yep. Everybody was, was coming to us. So um, I did 65 episodes, and if you go back and look at the first 65, I'm not wearing sneakers, I'm wearing penny loafers, and I dodged the goo. Didn't get a <laughs> drop on me, because I knew what it was doing to me. And the show exploded and I get called in to New York by all the executives at Nickelodeon and they said show's doing great we're gonna do 130 more but we have a problem what's the problem kids and focus groups say you need to get messy oh geez. Yeah. so from now on no more dodging the stuff well I said okay fine I waited my whole life I was 34 years old all I wanted to do was host a game show finally got it I wasn't going to run the other direction so I defy anybody to look at any one of those episodes and uh, not see that I'm having the best time of my life mm. but when the camera went off I just wanted to take all that stuff off me and run into the shower I can't and imagine. take a shower. I can't imagine. Well, then when did you get diagnosed and did you have any help? No, 86 to 94, we did Double Dare. Double Dare. I'm doing uh, a talk show on Lifetime Television called Biggers and Summer, Sissy Biggers and myself. And uh, we had a guest on. His name was Dr. Eric Hollander. And I was reading the information in my apartment the night before. And it listed all these things about something I had never heard of, OCD. And I said, oh my God, I do this, I do this, I do this. I think there I him. Wow. I think that I have this Aww. thing. Is that you saying that you think you have That's it? That's me saying wow. I think I have it on national television. Well, the next thing I know, the phones explode. I'm on Oprah. I'm on Howard Stern. Uh, People Magazine is doing an article on me. I came out and said that my parents did all this stuff. They didn't talk to me for a year because I said on national TV and, and People Magazine that I got this from my parents. And so wow. Dr. Hollander um, saved my life. And here's how he did it. We had that segment and I put it in the back of my head. I didn't do anything about fixing my problem. But when I would go back home to Los Angeles, we were shooting that show in New York, um, my family got sort of tired of me doing these rituals. So I would get up at two o'clock in the morning and straighten fringe on the rug. I remember seeing that. And, and uh, do my fixing and my straightening. And my wife came down at two in the morning and said, what the hell are you doing? Right. And I said, I don't know. And she said, you got to call that doctor. Oh. Wow. So I called Dr. Hollander and started doing sessions with him and uh, going to behavior therapy classes and went on medication. And it's not a quick fix. I always say, we were just talking during the commercial break, I say I'm 85% cured. I don't think I'm 100% cured. I don't think I ever could be. But I know how to deal with it now and I'm much better. But now, if I would have come out, uh, you know, when I was a kid, there was nothing they could do. Nobody right. knew what it was. No it's only it. been within the last 20 some years that they have medication and and classes to, to fix this problem. I can't imagine living with that. Like Especially I'm on so, that show. I know. I'm so glad that you right. got help. And for anybody out there watching who's listening, saying, that's what I have. I need help. Please, we've got some resources for you. Because it is estimated that between 2 and 3 million adults in the U.S. have OCD. So please reach out. If you're struggling, help is out there. I mean, Mark, look at that. Living Testimony proof. example. Well, look at how living he proof. Yeah. Okay. I right. Mean, he was far, during COVID, trust me, he was a lot more shape than, than I was. I wrote a book 
book called Everything in Its Place, and to this day, I think you still get it on Amazon, I don't even know, uh, people come up to me and say, I didn't know what I had until I saw you on these shows or until I read your book, and you changed my life. And of all the stuff what I've done in my career, that's been the most important. The most if you can wow. affect somebody's life and fix that problem, Amen. it's important. Amen. Wow. And then also Mark has a new podcast coming out that focuses on people who overcome their struggles. So DBL oh, Nation, check great. out Mark's new what podcast. It premieres on January 16th, and it is called Mark's Summer Unwraps.